Hey everyone, it's Hindash. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with Timmy. <laughs> Today's video is such a fun video because I'm here with Andrea. And if you don't know her, she is on this hit Netflix show, Al Arabi School for Girls. I had Joanna on my channel, um, I think it was almost a year ago. I don't want to, has it been almost a year? Maybe. <laughs> okay, no, it was definitely a couple of months ago. <laughs> So Andrea was in Dubai and of course we planned to shoot together. We've been talking about this for months and months and here we are. So if you want to know how I did this super natural, beautiful glam, then please keep watching. This is a beautiful everyday video as well. So I will be talking a lot about uh, very wearable everyday techniques. See you soon. Bye. All right, so here we have the beautiful Andrea and I'm so excited to finally have her on my channel. And as always, we're going to be starting with skincare. I'm going to be taking my Caudalie Beauty Elixir. And you know, I love this. I love that it relaxes people and kind of sets the tone for the rest of the steps. I'm going to be taking this serum from Dermalogica. This is the Circular Hydration Serum. And I'm going to be applying this all over her skin. This is very hydrating. I really love how this feels. And again, it's kind of a base for the rest of the skincare. I don't want to go too heavy. Andrea actually has a red carpet after this, so I kind of wanted to take care of the skin and to make sure that I'm not loading her skin with a lot of heavy emollients because she is acne prone, but she is dry at the same time. For my moisturizer, I'm gonna be taking the Drunk Elephant Proteini and I'm just gonna be applying that all over the skin again and taking that down the neck. And this is all I'll be doing for skincare for now and just making sure I'm rubbing that in and giving her a bit of a massage, getting that blood circulation going and just making her feel good. And massaging down the neck as well and tapping it in. For a little something extra special, I'm gonna be taking these really cool Dior eye patches and I've been waiting to use them and this is the right time on Andrea and they just look so cool. I need to get a pair for myself. But um, this is definitely something that you put on and take photos or videos because they look so cute. I'm going to keep these on and move on to the rest of the face. I'm going to be using a bit of a lip balm. This is from Glossier and applying a thick layer and leaving that on sort of as a lip mask so that by the time we get to lips, they are nice and hydrated. I'm going to start with eyes while the eye patches are on. So I'm taking a bit of a base. This is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot, and I'm applying that all over the eyes from the lash line pretty much up to the brow bone. And this neutralizes the eye and obviously creates a really nice base. And I'm applying that with a packer brush and just really working it in and blending it in. For eyes, I'm starting off with my Monochromance Gradient Palette and of course we're going to be dipping into the neutrals first to kind of set everything. So I'm taking Alter Ego, the lightest shade, and going underneath the brow bone and into the crease. And this basically mimics her skin tone. It just adds a tiny, tiny bit of warmth, nothing too much on Andrea's skin. And then I'm going to be moving on to Ego, which is more of that ashy taupe, and I'm building up the crease. So we're starting off on the outer corners and blending that into the crease. And this really contours and defines the eye and acts as a beautiful base to sketch out the shape that you want to go for. And I'm keeping things very neutral, very natural on Andrea, and very classic. So again, taking my time to blend this in, it's super easy. It's a very flattering color on her, so it's going to blend like a dream. To shape the eyes even more, I'm going to be taking my Hindash Eye Tone Pencil in the shade Intra, which is that beautiful chocolate brown. And I'm going to be taking that from the outer corner and winging it out. So now I'm going to be creating a winged liner. But again, this is the groundwork for the shape that I'm going to do. So blending that pencil in, it blends like a dream. And I'm going to be creating a wing and blending and smudging it out with a brush. That's all I'm going to be doing now and moving on to eyeshadow again. This time I'm taking my Hindash Beautopsy Gradient Palette, my first palette, and I'm going to be dipping into Intra in Intrafatum, which is matching with the Eye Tone Pencil. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking that color and setting the liner that I did. And this is something that I always do. I love smudging powders on top of the liners that match to increase the longevity of everything. After I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to be going in with my Hero Line Eyeliner and creating a very, very thin black line, starting from the base of the lashes and following, obviously, the brown liner that we did. So that kind of acts as a guide. 
And this is really great if you struggle with matching your eyeliner. You can use a very forgiving brown pencil, which blends and smudges very easily. Mine does. And you can really, really kind of work your way into a black liner. And because I don't want a harsh look, I'm going to be going into intrafatum again, this time going into the darker side, which is the black. And I'm going to be smudging everything. So now the black blends into the brown and it creates this really nice smoky liner. Going back into monochromance, I'm going to be taking the shade Match Made and I'm going to slightly blend over that liner that we did. So this is a much more neutral brown and I'm going over everything and taking it into the crease as well to kind of connect that liner into the crease and creating this really beautiful shadow work. And if you feel like you need to blend the edges, I'm going to be going back into Alter Ego, which is the lightest shade and just blending that all over the crease and into the brow bone. And this kind of acts as a smudger and diffuser shade. It really lightens up all the other shades and kind of acts as an eraser. Now that I've taken the eye patches off, I'm going to be going in with the Ulla Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream, just a dab underneath her eyes to make sure that that area is nice and fresh because I'm going to be going into the rest of the base makeup. So I kind of wanted to act as a primer. And as an actual primer for the rest of her face, I'm going to be taking the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer and applying that basically on the areas where she would get oily. So the nose, the chin, and the forehead. So the T-zone basically, and a tiny bit on the cheeks. And you don't want to rub this in too much. You want to pat instead because that kind of activates that blurring effect. And now I'm going to be moving on to foundation. I'm going to be trying this brand new Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. Now, this kind of threw me off a bit because I really genuinely thought it was a luminous uh, tinted moisturizer. Well, I didn't think it was luminous, but I thought it was a tinted moisturizer. And this is super, super full coverage. And um, I would have picked a better color, but I was in too deep because, you know, if it's a tinted moisturizer, it would have blended in with her skin tone. So I will show you how I correct that with a bronzer. But I'm going to be going in and I basically I'm trying to thin it out as much as I can because I always work in thin layers. So I wanted to see how far this foundation is going to go in a very, very thin layer. And of course, I would love to use this again where I know the effect that it's going to give. So I know how to prep the skin beforehand. For concealer, I'm going in with the KVD Good Apple Concealer. Again, a very full coverage concealer, which I didn't know I was going to be using with another full coverage foundation. And I'm applying that with a beauty blender, applying that underneath the eyes, a bit on the chin, anywhere where there are a bit of imperfections that I want to cover and brighten. I'm still struggling with the colors of these concealers. I feel like this was a bit too light, but again, I'm going to try to correct this with bronzers and blushes. For bronzer, I'm going to be taking my Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Cream Bronzer, and I love, love this bronzer. It's super lightweight. You can't go wrong. You can't have a very heavy application, so that's why I chose this, and I feel like it's really going to melt in with that foundation and try to kind of bring it back to more of a lifelike finish, which um, matches more of her undertone and more of that warmth. Because like I said, I thought that foundation was a tinted moisturizer, so I went with a lighter color. Again, it was completely my mistake, but I love working through, um, through things to find solutions, so I'm... Um, you know, just going with it. And I love figuring out how products work and that kind of makes me excited. So just putting that bronzer on all the high points and kind of contouring with it at the same time because we're bringing back dimension into the face. And now to add some color, I'm going to be taking the Honest Beauty Cream Blush and I'm going to be applying that with the same brush that I did foundation and bronzer because you have a bit of that left in and it's going to make things blend so much easier and more seamlessly and kind of work in harmony with all the colors that you've done. And I'm really applying this blush pretty high up because again, I also went light with the concealer. So I want to counteract that really bright under eye look. For brows, Andrea has great brows, so I'm really not going to do anything. I'm just taking a bit of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze and brushing them into place. If you have great brows and all you need is a bit of shaping, then that's all you need. To finish off the eyes, I'm going to be taking my Hint Dash Color Fluid in the shade Boy Tears, which is an ultra shimmer. This is my universally flattering shimmer topper. You can put it on the eyes, you can put it on the face and lips, but the application is key. So I would recommend using this with fingers, warm it up in the back of your hands, and work fast because once this sets, 
it's butch proof, it's waterproof. So you definitely want to do one eye at a time or one cheek at a time. And it is a very sparkly finish. So keep that in mind if you're using it on the face. But originally, this is created as this transformative topper that's going to change all your matte eyeshadow looks to this beautiful pop of champagne. And a little bit goes a long way. You can create a very romantic sparkle or you can go in for that full on wet look. For mascara, I'm going to be taking this Gucci mascara and just applying that all throughout the lashes. And I'm going to be topping off the eyes with a bit of individual lashes. These are the Ardell individuals in medium and focusing that on the outer corners. So I create more of that lift with the eyeshadow shape that I have going on. And I love these are my favorite. To contour the face, I'm going to be taking Alter Ego from my Monochromance palette and taking that underneath the nose and across the tip of the nose, which is, which is a technique that I always love to do to add that shape. And for a bit of a matte highlight, I'm going in with my Butopsy palette and mixing tan lines and wet paint and highlighting the tip of the nose and down the bridge. And this really creates a beautiful lift and that definition and complements the contour beautifully. Now for the lower lash line, I'm going back into my Monochromance palette and taking Alter Ego, Match Made, and Heartthrob and kind of creating my own mix, which is going to result in this kind of a warm brown. And applying it very softly on the outer parts of the eyes and blending whatever is left inwards. Just creating a very soft kind of warm haze underneath the eyes. Going back into Boy Tears, adding a bit on the back of my hand and taking a fluffy brush, I'm going to be applying that on the lower lash line, again, to create that very romantic, sparkly finish, which is more of a satin on the lower lash line, opposed to more of that dramatic sparkle on top. For a soft highlight, I'm taking the Laura Mercier Light Catcher in Celestial Light and going over the matte highlights that I've done to emphasize them even more and create a very soft glow. I really, really like this powder highlight. I didn't expect it to be this glowy and this beautiful, but in person, it really looks so soft. I'm actually adding a tiny, tiny bit underneath the eyes in that hollow. And of course, Cupid's bow, chin, and the high points of the cheek, so the cheekbones, with more of a fluffy, soft, diffuse brush to kind of give that romantic, glowy look. And I'm gonna be setting underneath the eyes with the Givenchy powder, this is the pink one. And again, a very, very light layer just to set the T-zone to create a blurred look. And for blush, I'm going in with Heavy Petal, Heartthrob, and Alter Ego to create a custom mix. And going over the cream blush that I did, basically. And a bit over the highlight to kind of blur everything in and mix everything in together. And I'm contouring with Alter Ego as well. Just in the hollows of the cheeks. A bit on the temples and the chin. For lips, I'm going to be going in with my Hint Dash Lip Tone in the shade Hush. And I'm basically lining her entire lips, going on the border and slightly over, and filling them in lightly. And this is a very pretty caramel nude shade, and now I'm going to make it even more rosy by adding another lipstick on top. And of course, I'm going to be using my Manifesto lipstick in Rest in Roses. This is a matte tinted lip balm, so you can apply a tiny bit and get this really rosy flush, or you can go in with more of a full intensity and get that berry reddish color but it is a lip tint and it's matte and it's hydrating and it's a balm and i wear this every day i love it so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be working it in with a brush so i can get it into the lips and create that long wearing color and then i'm going to be tapping it on to add more of that coverage and to kind of intensify it but i like to start slow and see how the color builds up on the lip I added more of a taupey lip liner to kind of see if I want to get more dimension, but I'm kind of blurring that and mixing it in. I kind of liked it how it was, so I'm just adding a bit more of that lipstick on top and making sure I'm perfecting and blending those edges. I've also been using this lipstick with my eye tone pencil in intro, which is that chocolate brown, and it kind of creates this really neutral, grungy, rosy color that I love. You have to try it if you have the, both of them. So after I've perfected that lip shape, I'm going to be going over it with a lip oil and then moving back to the cheeks, I'm taking heavy petal alone just to intensify that pink and to add more color now that the lip is done and I can see what's missing. 
And I'm taking a bit of match made with a liner brush and emphasizing any of her freckles and beauty marks. And again, that's something I really love to do. I feel like it brings life back to the skin. And going back in with mascara and a lash brush. This is a tiny fan brush. Just going underneath the lashes for that very light application. And that is the final look. I really hope you enjoyed this. And this is the perfect look for Eid as well. And any occasion that you have. I mean, she wore this to a red carpet. After this, she went in and got her hair done. You can see the photos on Instagram. And again, it's such a universally flattering look. The neutral tones are going to suit whatever you're wearing. And it's going to go with a lot of colors. So again, I hope you enjoyed watching this. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.